Welcome everybody to part 11 of my Unity VR guide. This is going to be a revision video thanks to a viewer known as Wing for pointing out a major bug I had. So thank you Wing. Today we'll learn how to make a wrist menu. We'll learn how to scale the UI down to our wrist. We'll learn how to mount the menu to our wrist and we'll learn how to bring it up using the menu button on our controllers. If you haven't been following this series, no worries. Every part is modular and can be done independently from all the others. Just download the GitHub project provided below, open up the project, and go to the corresponding scene to follow along. If you like a written tutorial, you can also find one in a link below as well. Opening up the project and going to this part 11 wrist menu, we will be greeted with this scene. It is our table as always, and we have the gun. And you might be wondering, why do we have a gun for a wrist menu video? Well, I wanna shoot it again. And I figured a nice thing that we could do for the wrist menu is just have a simple counter that will count how many times we shoot it and a button that will reset that counter. Outside of that, we have our left and right ray interactors that I have set to only interact with the UI layer, which, well, that should be pretty obvious why we're doing that. With that, let's make a wrist menu. I'm gonna start off by making a XR canvas. So UI canvas, there we are. I'm gonna name this wrist canvas. Then I'm going to enter in some values really quick and I'll explain them. Starting off with the positioning, I put it at 0, 1.2, and 0.44, and that's just so it's positioned so we can work on it. Eventually, that won't matter because we're going to mount it to our wrist. Then I have a width of 15 and a height of 30, and those might seem like random numbers, but they're actually not. See, what I've done here is put the scale at 0 0.01 across the board, and since Unity works in meters, this is essentially centimeters, so a height of 30 converts to about a foot if you're in the United States, which I am. And now, if you remember from previous videos, when we worked with XRUI, uh, it's set in world space, so it's going to be appearing in world space instead of an overlay. And that's pretty much it. Let's add some things to this. Let's start off by adding a image to our canvas, and I'm going to use this image as a border. And then I'm going to take this and stretch it throughout. So I'm going to click this, Shift and Alt, and that will stretch it out. And there we go. Now it fully encompasses our entire canvas. And with the border all stretched out, now let's add a sprite. And I actually made a very simple sprite for this. Honestly, it's just a rectangle that I exported from Photoshop and imported. But I did do a few things so it would import correctly and scale correctly. So first off, I changed the texture type to this Sprite 2D and UI so we could use it for the UI. And then I went into the Sprite Editor and I actually move these borders in this way. And this is called nine slicing. And essentially what it does is it makes it so these different little segments that I've created will end up not scaling with everything else. So it won't look so blurry. And I'll leave a link below describing this from the Unity documentation if you want to read more on that. So all we have to do now is go over here. We'll drag this in and see how it looks. And you'll notice that it's a little fuzzy, not exactly scaling the way we wanted to, but we can fix that by again coming over back to the canvas and we can change the reference pixels per unit. And so if we reduce this to say about 20, now it's looking pretty good. So if you're ever having problems with things scaling in and your canvas doesn't have a lower pixel per unit number, this will fix it. And don't be afraid to play around with that number. Find out what is right for you in your use case. It could be 10, it could be one, uh, but for me in here, I think it is 20. So with that, let's add a button. So I am going to right click here and I'm gonna go to UI, look for button, TextMess Pro, and I will name this reset button. And that button's looking a little big. So I'm gonna enter some values in really quick. Okay, and I set the width to 50 and a height of 40, and then I reduce the scale down to 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and then just one. And I want it to be on the bottom, so I'm gonna come over here, shift, alt, and bring that down. And then I wanna lift it up on the white position, and I think 1.25, yeah, that looks okay. Last, I'm gonna change this text to say reset, and then I'm going to click auto size here, so it'll automatically adjust the size of the font. And I don't care for it to be that big. And if I expand this, I can also add margins, which I typically like to add about five or 10. 
There we go. And that looks pretty good for now. Maybe set it all to bold. And you know what? Let's capitalize all these. Reset. Perfect. All right, and that is our reset button. The last thing we need to add is going to be our counter for how many times we shoot the gun. So I'm gonna come back over to UI, Text Mess Pro, and we will call this gun counter. Now with that, I am going to anchor this right in the center. So a shift, alt, and boom, click that. So now it's anchored there, and I need to enter some values in really quick. Okay, and so the values I put in are a width of 10 and a height of 10, and the text is still being goofy, so to fix that, I'm just going to hit auto size here, allow it go down to one. Uh, this is gonna be displaying numbers, so I'm gonna put a zero there, and the alignment's off, so I'm gonna align it towards the center. And last but not least, I'm gonna give it a margin of one all the way around it. There we go. So with that, we have our counter, we have a reset button, and a nice little border. All we have to do now is connect everything, but I am going to prettify this for myself. You don't have to do this. I'm just gonna change the colors of the text and border just to make it a little more shrimpy. All right, that's looking pretty shrimpy to me. And if you wanna do this yourself, you just change the colors on the different images and buttons and text. Nothing too fancy there. Uh, let's get this working. So to get this working, let's start with the gun counter. So if we come to add component, I already have a script here called shot counter that you can look up. And all this really does is it comes in, it updates the text anytime the gun fires. And then it also has a public function that we can call to reset the counter if we press that button. But you know what? We need to connect that button. So if we come over here to reset button, we should be able to go to on click and then drag this gun counter in there. Come down here to shot counter and reset counter. Starting up the scene, you'll see that I'm able to grab the gun, I can shoot it, and I can reset it. The counter goes up and it will reset when I hit reset. Cool, so it's officially working. Let's get this canvas mounted to our wrist. And I'm just gonna slap this right onto the left-hand controller and I'm gonna zero out these values and I'm gonna wear my headset and press play and I'm gonna adjust it in play mode. And I found that to be the best way to get it looking how I want. And you'll see starting up the scene that I can move my hand around and it kind of looks like I'm holding it, but we want it more on the wrist. So what we can do is grab the canvas directly in the editor and we can move it and rotate it until we get it to about where we want. Okay, and now that I have that in the position that I want, all I have to do is come over here, right click and then copy component. Once I've done that, I can then stop pressing play. It's gonna reset everything, but I can come over and paste component values. And now our menu should be right where we need it. Pretty cool. So with our menu working and it being attached correctly on our wrist, the last thing we need to do is be able to toggle it on and off with the menu button. So what we need to do is come into samples, XR interaction toolkit, and we'll open up this. And if you'll remember, this is where we get our inputs from, is the Unity input system. So I'm gonna come over to this XRI left hand and I'm gonna click this plus sign to add a new action. This action is gonna be called menu because we're gonna make it for the menu button. And we need to find the path for the left hand controller. So I'm gonna go to XR controller, left hand, and then optional controls. And then we need to look for something that says menu button, there it is. And I'm choosing the left hand because if we did the right hand on the Oculus, it would actually bring up the Oculus menu when we press it. All right, next we just exit out of this. I have this on autosave. So if you don't have autosave on, just make sure to save it and yeah, exit out. The last thing we need to do is connect this with our button that we just set up or input, I should say. And if you watched my previous video on Wrist UI, this is where things are gonna change a bit. And so I'm gonna start off by adding a script here called Wrist UI. And if I open it up, it's not too complicated. All I do is come in and I have a public input action asset called input actions. And we are going to use that to find the action map here of the left-hand controller. And we are looking for that menu button that we just set up. Then we enable it and then we tie it to toggle menu. So whenever it is performed, it is going to turn the menu on or off. And that's it, pretty simple. Coming back here, we only have one thing that we need to hook in, which is the input actions. So we can do that. Uh, we can go to XRI, input actions, 
there it is. And I just drag it over and save. And so now if we start up the scene, you'll see that we can shoot the gun. It will track the numbers. It will reset it if we press reset. And when we press the menu button on the left controller, the menu will appear and disappear because we're enabling and disabling the canvas. There you have it. If you found this useful, consider liking the video. It helps me reach others and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.